Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chase Wingate. I represent Open Broadband LLC. Uh, we are a internet service provider, specifically wireless, uh, fixed wireless service provider, but we also bill ourselves as a hybrid uh, technology internet, internet service provider. You may say, what the heck does that mean, Chase? I'm going to elaborate on what that means in a little bit, but I wanted to lay the groundwork with that. Uh, I want to share that we, great job, we do a lot of the same we operate in a lot of the same ways as Randolph does. Um, we're small, we're locally owned, uh, North Carolina owned and operated, although our services are being aggressively asked for in other states, Virginia, South Carolina to be specific. Uh, but a little bit about me and why I'm here and why I work for Open Broadband and what our mission is. Um, I'm a family man. I live in, I actually live in Southern Wake County in Fuquay, Verena. Um, married for th almost 13 years now. Uh, my wife and I have done foster care for years, and some of the children that one of the one of the reasons that I personally got an interest in serving some of the underserved and I guess, I guess you could say forgotten parts of um, some of the demographics and, and areas of communities or counties is I've seen it in my own home where I have people that have been I guess sort of left out in life um, in in more of a, a deeper sense, but um, I just have a heart for you know, bringing services, whatever they may be, to the underserved parts of, of any community. Um, and if the pandemic taught us all anything in here is that uh, broadband is not something that's a luxury. It's a, it's a utility. You have to have it for life. Uh, I think we can all agree on that. Maybe 10 years ago it was a luxury, right? Well, I can watch my Netflix if I have broadband. Well, now you've got to have it for banking. You've got to have it for school. It's not, it's not a, oh, I have an option to do it for school. Sometimes your kids are at home. And, you, and they have to do you know, school from home. But now what do you do? Um, and so um, us, companies like Randolph, small local carriers are partnering with communities such as Chatham County. And uh, I'll say great job. I appreciate Bernie and Jesse inviting us in, in here to, to present to you guys and connect with the community. And hats off to you guys for, for doing what you do and rallying the community and organizing this because um, you know, sometimes there's nobody else uh, providing a forum or a voice or organization for a collective voice to uh, serve the needs of the community that, let's, let's face it, a lot of the big players in the industry are, le are, are leaving out, frankly. A lot of that ha is, is just from a financial standpoint, they just don't see the value. Um, we see the value, Open Broadband does, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how, why we see the value and how, how we kind of operate on a day-to-day -day basis and what we do. Um, I will say I'll definitely open it up for a Q&A at the end. Uh, just as, as you did. Um, and uh, so keep track of your questions if you have them. Hold on to them at the end. I'll definitely, I love answering all your questions. I'm sure you have many. Um, so let's get started. I have a little slideshow to present as well. Um, all right, so uh, first I want to describe how our technology works now. Don't get too fixated on all the terminology here. Uh, don't, don't let that bog you down or confuse you. Uh, essentially how we work, when I mentioned earlier that we take a hybrid uh, technology approach to how we deliver internet signal, I'll say, to any given residence or address or community. Um, typically how we operate is we have a tower, we have our equipment on a tower, so that could be like a cell tower like AT&T and Verizon T-Mobile are on. Uh, it could be a communications tower for like a radio station or at a school, uh, anything like that. Any, any asset that's high enough for us to be able to broadcast um, our signal from that tower to a home or a business. I'll go a little bit more into depth on that in a minute, but um, we feed those towers. A lot of, the, a lot of times that the, the incoming signal to those towers that we're broadcasting from are coming in uh, oftentimes by fiber providers like Randolph, right? Um, and, uh, or AT&T, CenturyLink. So a lot of times we're having, we have a really robust, what we call backhaul. And the term backhaul is, is referencing the, the signal that's the big pipe of signal, the big pipeline of signal that's feeding that, uh, that location, which we're then rebroadcasting out um, to other areas. So sometimes that fiber is ours, uh, but we use whoever is there, whoever can provide us that juice that we need to then rebroadcast out to the folks that need it the most. Um, so, you know, again, we have that fiber backbone. Uh, we go up a tower. We have tower climbers go place equipment. Uh, that broadcasts either line of sight technology to a home or business or non line of sight, uh, similar to how cell phone LTE signal works. Uh, some of our technologies that we use are not too far removed from cell phone LTE. Um, and I'm sure many of you, 
uh, can go home, uh, I would say at least one of you in here can go home and you have hardly any usable internet at your home, except your cell phone might actually have 10 times better signal than what your home internet is. I've been in that situation before. I know many folks that are. In fact, our average customer that we serve, uh, they're switching off of an expensive hotspot option, right? They're, they have US cellular hotspot at you know, $90 a month and it's data capped really low. So they reach it really quick, especially with working from home, virtual school, and things like that. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't discriminate against any sort of technology. We look at any given area that has requested us to come in and provide a broadband solution, and we will game plan uh, to, as a company internally on how the most efficient, um, cost-effective, uh, quick from a time standpoint of deployment and uh, just the overall feasibility. We'll look at what's available technology-wise. Is it spectrum? Is it centrally? Is it fiber from whoever provider? We'll, we'll, we'll utilize that bandwidth because there's, especially if it's fiber, oftentimes there's tons of it, right? It's just not getting to your house or your neighborhood. And we will rebroadcast that from a strategic point that we uh, have on the map that we've identified and partnered with the community and sometimes local governments to get our assets on. And we will put broadcasting equipment on that tower and then beam it to your house, your neighborhood, okay? Um, so we have uh, line of sight technology, and you'll see some of these uh, things on here that are, that are line of sight um, that requires minimal obstructions. It requires that the equipment that we mount on your house to actually see our tower. Now, it could be five miles away, but it, it needs to have minimal obstructions in between. But we also have emerging technologies that we're able to use, again, similar to LTE um, technology that allows us to penetrate through a lot of tree coverage. Um, the, one of the reasons, I, in my opinion, one of the reasons why uh, places like North Carolina specifically in Chatham County um, are having a hard time getting broadband coverage uh, besides the, the big fiber players like the AT&Ts of the world is that the tree coverage, even with companies like ours, right? Because we're not the only uh, company that operates with this uh, tower fixed wireless technology. There's, there's lots of us out there in, this, in the country but even then, it, we have a lot of challenges with getting through the tree coverage. Um, I grew up in California. Don't hate me. I, I've, I've laid my roots here, and this is home now. But, um, you know, there's, I grew up in a desert out there, and there's no tree coverage. You could, you could blast for 20 miles, and there's not going to be a single tree in, in your way. Um, North Carolina, a lot different, right? We have a lot of tree coverage, and it creates a lot of problems in terms of how it degrades the signal that we're blasting. We could have a gig, uh, one gigabyte service, which is a thousand megabytes uh, of internet from right here, and we can go over to that door, and if there's enough trees in, the, in between, we can hardly get any signal to that door, literally. Um, so that's one of the challenges that we have. That's, that's, in fact, I would argue, the biggest challenge that we have, uh, even when everything else is right. We have the agreement from the community. We have the funding. Um, and so we do employ different strategies to get around those obstacles, and that's part of my job as the area manager of Open Broadband in Eastern North Carolina. I manage technicians, I project manage uh, small sites where, you know, let's say we have a lot of these tree coverage or other obstructions, right? We, we I'll go out there on site and we'll project manage around those things, right? So uh, we have a lot of success with doing like things like that, but those take specific targeted, you know, pr uh, projects in those tiny neighborhoods and, you know, we knock them down one at a time, right? So uh, we're not currently in Chatham County yet. We would like to be. Um, we have actually sent proposals on multiple occasions to Chatham County in the past. Um, can't necessarily say why they haven't decided to move forward. Would love to serve Chatham County in the same way we serve about 15 other counties right now between North, South Carolina, and Virginia. Um, so we have a uh, similar model. You sign up for our services on our website, uh, www.openbb.net. I would encourage you to go on there, uh, get on our wait list. Why should you get on our wait list if we're not, if I'm just telling you we're not already in Chatham County? Because it shows uh, our, our company leadership and then we can also share, not your individual data, but we can show the overwhelming interest in a particular area to the local uh, powers that be that we can say, hey, listen, your, your residents are telling us that, you want, that they want us here. They're telling us that they're hungry for a solution. And um, whether it be Randolph, 
communications, whether it be open broadband, tell us that you're hungry so that we can use that as, as evidence to, to make a case to go into an area, right, and get that funding. Um, we have the info at openbb.net uh, inbox. Uh, I'm actually one of the, the folks that receives those uh, inquiries if you email that inbox. So uh, if, if you email uh, that after, I le after you leave here today, I will be one of the ones that responds. Um, so I would actually encourage you right now, the best way to show your interest is just to go sign up on our sign-up list on openbb.net. Um, that would be the best way right now. We also have a sales hotline right here. Uh, and also, uh, you can st I'll stick around after this for a little bit and, and chat it up with anybody who wants to talk further, uh, give business cards out, and so on and so forth. But um, all the information I'm talking about right now and giving you regarding signing up and things like that, it's available on our website, openbb.net. Um, okay, a little bit more how, how it works. So let's say, um, I'm not going to go over this too much because we don't, we don't currently have services in your county, but just quick overview. Um, when we are in an area that we have tower coverage, we have someone on our sign-up list. How does that work? We contact you, say, hey, uh, Mrs. Lee, we're going to come out to your house. I see you're on a sign-up list. We're going to come out to your house. A uh, technician's going to come out with some test equipment, and we're going to see uh, how well that signal is getting from our tower uh, to your home. And if we have a usable, good enough signal, we're going to mount equipment on your home and proceed with an installation, as long as you agree. Um, so the installation takes anywhere from 30 minutes to a couple hours. Um, it's easier than your average AT&T fiber, Spectrum, uh, coax you know, install. Why is it easier? Well, we don't have to worry about getting signal through the ground or like making connections at the box down the road. Um, we're just coming from a tower, kind of like a cell tower. So that, in that regard, it's a lot easier. Uh, from a time standpoint, it's really easy. Um, it's pretty in, uh, minimally invasive to your home. We do mount a small piece of equipment like you see on the pitch of this roof. Um, it's just a small dish that receives a signal from the tower, okay? But uh, the size of that dish is about a third of the size as like your direct TV or dish network and things like that. So it's much smaller. We don't have to mount it to your roof. It's very non-invasive to your house. It weighs maybe a pound and a half and it comes off super easy. Usually it's to the faucet or the eave. All right, so very uh, non-invasive. We, we run one line into your house. It's a ethernet coax, uh, sorry, ethernet cat five or cat six, sorry. A little parts already. And then we provide a uh, Wi-Fi router slash modem um, at no extra charge, no monthly fee. Um, and we provide that, and, and our technician will, will set that up in the most optimal place in your house so that it can cover the, the majority of your house with good, uh, fast Wi-Fi, and then we connect your, connect your uh, devices. Not so different than any other Internet company would do in that regard. Um, all right. I already covered what a site visit was. Uh, hub site, I'll go over that a little bit because down the road, this may matter if we're in Chatham County and we have our services here that we can offer you. So sometimes, actually often times, um, we have, like I mentioned before, we have uh, instances where we have uh, a home or a group of homes that wants our services and they're within range of our s signal. However, there's too, many uh, there's too many obstructions in between uh, the two points to, for our signal to be good. However, we have the ability to essentially bounce off of other uh, customer locations that are receiving a good signal and are within a reasonable distance of the house. Well, you may say, well, what the heck is a reasonable distance? I don't know how this technology works. Um, we have, uh, if so, I want to show you on this picture, if you see, there's a, there's a, there's a little pole looking thing on the picture on the right. That's what's called an omnidirectional antenna. There's a million of those all over cell towers uh, all over the country. Uh, you don't see them because they're high up on the tower. But similar technology, what that does is it broadcasts uh, Internet signal, uh, similar to LTE signal, uh, in a 360-degree radius. Uh, depending on the, cover, like the obstructions and how much like tree coverage, two miles away sometimes. Um, a lot of applications we have are like a quarter mile to a half mile as long as there's not a whole lot of tree coverage. But um, let's say all the houses, let's say this house, and this is an actual real life example, this house right here, this is in Lewisburg in Franklin County, north of Raleigh area. Um, that house cannot see our, that house is the only house in the neighborhood that can see our tower. None of the other 20 houses around it can see our tower and have a good enough usable signal because of tree coverage, okay? And so we have the ability to, that house is getting well over 300 megabytes per second, okay? 
Um, and the other provider in that area, I won't say the names, but it's, it's a telephone company provider, and they're getting two megabytes. Uh, they're paying for two. They're getting, like, one, maybe, on a good day, right? Um, and it goes out all the time, and it takes a week to get back up. Sound? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but, uh, you know, it goes out, and it, and it takes days to come back. And when the tech comes out, as, as, as well-intentioned as the technician may be, they say, hey, I'm going to level with you, Mr. Smith. We ain't going to ever be able to fix these lines out there. They don't, we don't get the funding. The company said they ain't going to fix it. Sound familiar, anybody? I know we've all heard that before, right? So um, we encounter that a lot, and we're switching customers. Our company, Open Broadband, is switching over a ton of customers every day that are in those situations to a, a much better permanent situation, and they're never looking back in the rearview mirror. So um, this poll right here is rebroadcasting the signal that the, only this one house is able to receive in that area because of obstructions. They're rebroadcasting it to the other, um, other ha uh, ha nearby houses that don't have a tower connection. Uh, this is a powerful tool that we have, right, because – it's a very low cost. We talk a lot about cost, right? You're going to hear, you hear a lot about that right now in this setting. And, and you've heard it plenty of times before me and her. The cost is really the prohibitive piece of the whole puzzle here as to why any company, whether small or large, is, is not in your area right now, right? They just don't see the business case, right? Well, we have a lot easier, um, a lot easier ability to see a lower cost entry point into an area because we have technologies like this that allow us to cover and blanket a lot of houses with a very, very low cost, okay? The, the biggest cost that we have in just getting to an area like Chatham County or, excuse me, or a particular area of Chatham County is just getting our equipment on the tower, paying the tower climbers. Guys, it's thousands of dollars for a couple tower climbers just for a day. Uh, typically, we require multiple crews at different sites to coordinate lining up and uh, you know, uh, streamlining and, and connecting equipment at different tower sites so that they all have redundancy. And I could go on about that, but it, it costs a lot more than you might think. Um, and so that's a big that's a big entry cost for us. But once we get over that barrier, right, with this fixed wireless technology that we typically heavily rely on, um, man, we can blanket so many people in a, in a small in a, in a large area, especially with these um, hub sites and, and the repeater equipment that we have. Um, and the cool thing is, is that uh, even if uh, you may say, well, Chase, you know, there's tons of, you know, that's cool that you have these, these, this equipment, but there's a bunch of trees in between me and my neighbors. So I couldn't possibly even see my neighbor's roof like, like this. That's okay. On the equipment that we mount on these houses, they're so, they don't go as far as the stuff we have on towers, like, you know, five, ten miles. These are going a couple miles or, or half a mile. But because uh, the type of frequency they have doesn't go as far, they can, the, the one positive side on that, the flip side, is they can go, they're more powerful and they can go through more obstructions. So the distance-wise, they don't get as far, but from a standpoint of being able to blast through more obstructions, they can go through far more. So we can get through trees in a lot of different settings at short distances, right? And even if you're at the t tower, um, if you're close enough to the tower within maybe, I, you know, I don't quote numbers, but maybe a thousand feet, a couple thousand feet, you can get through a significant amount of trees um, with some of our technology just because it's so close. Anyway, um, I hope that gives a little bit more understanding of kind of how we work uh, just in general and how our technology works. Just some photos of some recent installations that we've done. Um, most of these are in uh, Franklin and Vance County, uh, Car Lake Peninsula. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but we're uh, heavily up there. Um, and uh, you can see right here we're going through trees, right? We're, we're, we're going through similar settings as we have in Chatham County, right? Trees. Um, all right. So um, why choose open broadband for a solution, right? Um, I think I've already kind of made that case, but uh, we have a faster uh, time in, in terms of being able to get into a particular area or neighborhood and provide service, right? We don't have to, no offense to the fiber providers, we don't have to wait uh, for any tr major trenching or, uh, don't get me wrong, fiber is a fantastic and the ultimate goal, uh, even for us, way down the road, right? But we're talking about what's, a, what about the in-between? What about in 2022, 2023, 2024? That's cool that we can do other things that are the best case scenario years from now in some cases and get fiber everywhere, but that's going to take years. We have solutions now uh, that can reach you quickly. So um, going through the air is a really, really good solution for Internet. 
Um, I will say, before I came to open broadband, I was at AT&T Fiber for almost a decade. I didn't know about fixed wireless and this sort of technology. I didn't know you could do internet through the air unless it was with your cell phone. Um, well, we can do that same similar type of cell phone technology where you're getting great. Look, at, I get 300 megabytes on my cell phone at home uh, on AT&T, the speed test, you know. Um, so we have, again, we use similar technology and we just mount a small thing on your house, a little radio, um, connect to our tower, and uh, bam, we're getting you that similar connectivity, low latency. Uh, low latency is how quick the connection is in layman's terms, and that really shines through. That really shines through in uh, video conferencing, virtual school, things like that. Uh, we have really low latency. Um, so there's not a lot of downsides to our service. Uh, we just need the partnership from, again, like, I, like you mentioned, uh, a lot of grants. There are tons of federal grant monies. America Rescue Plan Act. Anyone heard of that? ARPA funds. Those, those have come about from, from the COVID um, sort of, I, uh, I guess, uh, revolution or awakening uh, that the government and the nation as a whole has recognized that, wow, now since everybody's at home having to do school and work from home, oh my goodness, we have a huge problem. Broadband is not good at people's homes in so many places. And so open broadband provides a really good solution to that problem uh, for the reasons that I've outlined here. But um, real quick on, on pricing, we don't do contracts and we have, we don't do contracts unless they're for businesses, but for our residential customers, you can leave whenever you want. Uh, and don't have any penalty. We don't contract you because people don't want to leave us anyway. Why would you? Why would we make you do that? Uh, second, we have pricing. It's not expensive. We have pr uh, plans for residential customers that start at $39.99. Yep. Um, most of the time, we are providing, uh, for a customer that we switch over, that we're uh, doing an install, like for example today, uh, we installed customers that are getting, you know, on a $44.99 package, they weren't paying $75 a month for the phone company and getting uh, a quarter of the speed, right? So from a cost per uh, download, you know, download and upload, they're getting way better value with us and not, not contracted. So, um, and we're locally owned and operated. So even our support center is in uh, Wilson. So uh, I want to open that up to any questions you may have. Bernie, is that okay? Okay, any questions?